How is everybody? Uh, can, can you turn that off? And I want to show you something. Turn off, turn off the big light, please. And then turn off the whatever. The yes. Um, I've been talking to uh, our missionary to uh, uh, Myanmar. Uh, he's been there over a year now, and been, he's been working very hard, very hard. So I want to show you some pictures. Let's see the most recent pictures. Oops. Can you see it? It's not... That's a balcony, yes. We have, this is the front. See that, see the, uh, this door? This is a pretty good, pretty big house. It's a 2,500 square foot bottom. So it's about this big, a little smaller than this, really, actually. Uh, but two stories. We have a balconies. Now we have the railing, yes. So here's the railing. Hello? Maybe that's it. I want to show you some videos. Oh, that's going to be a lot of millions, yes. But it's a lot of million jet in Myanmar. This is inside. It's pretty wide. It's all the tiles and iron bars, the windows. Everything is in. And the ceiling. He's looking for a ceiling fan with light. And so this is the way to the kitchen to the back, and the tile on the floor is done, and the seal and the wall, it's all covered, so we can wash water with water. So they're not working there. <laughs> <laughs> so all the pipings and electrics uh, uh, connection, electronic connections are done. So we're going into the living room, and this is the bathroom that is accessible from the living room, just for the guests. So we have a sink, toilet, and a shower. We can take a shower, too. There are two of them. Uh, we can take a shower. And then there's a room underneath. I mean, there is a room and downstairs. This is one room. And it has its own shower also and bathroom. So you can walk in. Here's a toilet again. So there are three toilets downstairs. And then instant water heater. You see that? Then you, uh, so if, uh, if you see uh, on the wall, we have 220 volt and 120 volt uh, sockets separately uh, so that we don't have to blow all the electronics. So we have the, uh, like Jeju, yes, we have a, a railing here, and then we have a large window and going upstairs. And uh, uh, upstairs. So this is uh, um, upstairs continuation. See this, the electronics all done. You see that? The wall. So as you go up, there is a room, another room uh, with its own uh, shower. This is a, a private room. And each toilet has a, a shower capability. So you go out. And then on the left-hand side, this is a men's toilet. I mean, men's bath, a men's room. It's about 15 people can sleep in here. So that's uh, outside. Uh, 
and we have a balcony. And he slid the door open, and he went outside. So inside on the floor, there, we have a double socket right there. And then this is a, a toilet, three on the left, three on the right. So there are six uh, with uh, six shower capabilities. Each, and then the urinal, yeah. Each, each shower with an instant water heater. Almost done. And then you walk out the hallway. There is another room, private room, with its own shower. Um, There's a toilet walking in. And on the floor, you can see there are three different kind of plugs. And this is a ladies' uh, room. And then three, three on the each toilet. So there are six stalls and uh, six showers. So it'd be enough, wouldn't it? Would each shower have its own water heater? And then coming out the hallway, and this is a little balcony to, uh, of the kitchen. So it has its own railing, and we can, I don't know, have a barbecue there. And then we can go upstairs. To the roof, yes. And there's some space on top. This is the roof. And then you go out into the roof. And this is about 2,500 square foot of flat. It has an upper uh, railing, so people don't fall off. So the upper roof is about big as this room, little smaller than uh, this room. Uh, so uh, eventually, we want to put uh, uh, solar panels here. Um, it is uh, prohibitively uh, expensive. In, uh, you know, in, in California, the state of California and U.S. government subsidized the solar panel installation. So, you know, um, like a rebates and tax, you know, benefits. In, in Myanmar, they ain't got that. So, uh, and then also, uh, we cannot uh, connect to the main line. Uh, we have to be what we call a off-grid. Now, off-grid uh, solar panel itself is, is rather expensive, but the problem is the batteries. Uh, batteries are also very expensive, but um, we're trying to, uh, trying to uh, get something working. So uh, before we put the a full solar panel, we have uh, decided, because we had uh, a funding in, so... This is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to put a, a, a 50 kilowatt hour um, a diesel generator. So you probably, you pro oh, this, isn't this beautiful? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So um, um, you probably don't know what 50 kilowatt generator uh, looks like. So this is so. This is a. A 50 kilowatt uh, generator uh, from um, a Caterpillar, it's a KVA, so uh, voltage times MPG is wattage. Do you, do you know? Do you, um, so anyways, uh, so when we say kilowatt, this is what kilowatt look like, KVA. In other words, this is 1,000 grand, and this is voltage, this is ampage. Okay, so usually uh, our our homes is 10 amp, 10 ampere, and our uh, voltage is 100 volt, right? Yes. So how many how many kVA? Huh? One kVA. Okay, one kVA. Usually when we say one kVA uh, equals one horsepower, usually or in a in a ballpark. Okay, so uh, one kVA, uh, you, know, you know the ladies' hair dryer is about 1.5 kVA. Okay, so uh, you know, those, those are, are rather strong. Uh, do you have a, a Vitamix? Do you know Vitamix? 
Yeah, Vitamix, 3 kVA. Uh, Vitamix is very strong motor, uh, so it has a 3 kVA. Um, so anyways, uh, so this is a, a 50 uh, kilowatt hour generator. It's running right now, but it's very silent. Oh, now it's running. I lied. So this is uh, 50 kVA sounds like and looks like. Basically, it is um, like a, a Volvo uh, engine uh, or uh, diesel like, um, like Camry engine. A little bigger. This is it. So uh, what we are going to do is if we can put this, um, we have 10 air conditioners uh, will be installed. So what on the maximum electric uh, usage at the peak is about 42 kilowatt hour. Remember, do you remember seeing the uh, air conditioner unit on the window in, in Pastor Pumpi's church? The little dinky one, right? Those are one kilowatt, uh, uh, one kilowatt, um, one horsepower. Uh, the, the little bigger one is two kilowatt, two kilowatt. So if we have two kilowatt, we're going to put two kilowatt, 10 of them. So there are five of them downstairs and five on the upstairs. So if uh, theoretically, if we are running fi all five of them downstairs and all five of them upstairs, there will be 20 kilowatt hour altogether, right? And then the, uh, and then the, the refrigerator, uh, the fan, the light, and the cooking and all that, or another about, about 15 to 20 kilowatt hour. So we are calculating about 40 kilowatt uh, hour maximum. So we are getting 50 kilowatt uh, generator. Uh, however, we don't need to run this machine all the time because obviously this runs on diesel, so you know it takes quite a bit of money. It, it runs about uh, about a, a, a gallon, it runs about a, a little more than an hour, so it's not that expensive. About maybe five dollars uh, an hour running it, to run it. Okay. Now, if you run ten hours, that's fifty dollars. The good thing is. Uh, we don't need to run this full capacity all the time. So what we are going to do is uh, on the upstairs uh, and then downstairs, uh, we are going to put two units. I mean, two. Uh, so upstairs, we will have a 2 kV line in, and downstairs, we'll have a 2 kV line in, uh, which is what Myanmar standard, that's their home usage. So imagine if you are hair drying and the uh, refrigerator runs, it shuts off. So it's, it's really a dinky, little dinky one. However, for a one person or one family to live, no problem. So we will rarely use the generator when, you know, when the American team members are not there. But imagine 20 of us are visiting there. So we are all sleeping upstairs or all downstairs. Then we all want the AC on, so we'll full blast AC on, then the, uh, the generator will kick in. So I, I was thinking, you know, we are there maybe three, four times a year. So we'll only run three, four times a year. If we run all day long, which we will not, you know, but if we run all day long, that's 20 hours. 20 hours, that's uh, one gallon per hour, that's 20 gallons, right? So 20 gallons about $100, right? So we'll, we'll probably spend $100 on, on electricity every day if we are there. That's maximum capacity. Okay, that's, that's really not, not too bad. But eventually, what I want to do is, you know, we are going to build a, a, a little bigger building on, on this side or this side, maybe about 3,000 foot 
uh, downstairs and 3,000 for the upstairs, so we can do the TSDS. Now, before we are going to do that, I want to put the four solar panel and 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 batteries, batteries. So, uh, for you know, uh, for instance, uh, if we will need a, a 50 uh, kilowatt batteries, if you know, 50 kilowatt batteries. Now, Tay in in his house, he has a Tesla battery. Right? You have one, I mean, not, you don't have Tesla, LG battery. You have one or two? One. Yeah, he has one that's 8 kV, 8 kilowatt uh, a battery. So we will need about maybe about six, nine, eight, eight of them if we want to run this whole thing on batteries, you know, because if we put the solar panel here and all that. Now that problem is the batteries are expensive because... Um, because you know, you know the the batteries that we have in the phone, you know, uh, it requires uh, a lithium-ion battery, and, and that's the part that I expensive. So that's why the uh, Elon Musk, uh, Musk is is building a, a gigafactory. Do you hear, hear about gigafactory? Can you turn on the light? Let's. So, anyways, um, so the, they want to uh, make the battery there now, <clears throat> just for uh, uh, reference. Uh, what, Pastor Shin, what is 50 kV uh, battery look like? Well, my Tesla Model 3 has 80 kV batteries. So that's a huge battery, if you think about it. So that's bigger than the battery that's in the Tesla is bigger than the battery that we are planning to put in the entire house with 10 air conditioners. So that's, that's how the, um, the comparison goes, okay? Questions about, so we are going to have a, we'll probably be having an opening uh, for sure in January 30th, and I think Tony and Jane uh, are planning to go there, uh, staying for a couple of weeks in, in early part of the November. So probably in three weeks they will go there. And so Tony will, uh, look over the, the floor because he's a professional. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I mean, he's not going to put the floor, but you know, he'll. Uh, oh. And maybe uh, we will probably uh, start putting the um, the furniture and all the you know cookeries and, and stuff. Now there are a few other things that we need to do. Uh, still, is that uh, the perimeter wall. Perimeter wall, if you think about it, you know, it's a 1.5 acre, almost two acres of land, which is uh, uh, from, from here to all the way there, we're trying to build eight feet wall. Because if you build a house there, did you see the house compared to the rest of the houses? So we want to build a little higher wall so that people don't climb over. Um, that cost a lot of bricks. I didn't know how many bricks. <laughs> I start calculating. Oh, oh my goodness, that's a that's a really a, a large amount of brick. Anyways, that's what we are trying to do. And then after the wall is done, we're going to do the the ground uh, gardening. You know, right now if you can see it, you know, the ground is just just basically just jungle. You know, so we want to grade it and and put some grass and 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 all that. Uh, that might take maybe a few more months. But it's almost done, almost done. Let's give God the glory, shall we? <laughs> I have never done this, this kind of work. That's, that's such an amazing story. Okay. So I hear, any, any questions about Myanmar? Yes? Trash. Oh, in, in Myanmar? What kind of trash? What, what's going to happen in tra trash? With trash from well, the building. Well, unfortunately, in Myanmar, they ain't, they ain't got no trash pickup. So you generate <laughs> trash. <laughs> Guess what's going to happen? I have to deal with it. So there are a couple things I've been thinking. Um, the organic waste, you know, the food. Okay, I'm not talking about the, the excrement. Okay. The organic food materials, I want to gradually uh, build a, a chicken coop 
So I've been, I've been looking into uh, how to grow maggots. Uh, do you know how to grow maggots? I, I, I know pretty well now. So we're going to uh, make a... <laughs> have, I, have I ever shown you the, the maggot factory? It's okay. You don't want to see it? No. Huh? It's really clean. I mean... Yeah. That's it, just a simple box, very simple. Look, and then you put the you know, organic waste. And there is this, uh, okay, this is not a fly fly. Okay, the fly that you and I are known, those are you know, germ-carrying flies. But if you put these food out, those flies don't usually come. These kind of, this is called soldier fly larvae. So, I don't know why they call it soldier fly, but this is how they grow. And then, there's this, uh, this is it. That's the, this is called pupae. Pandegi, pandegi, pupae. <laughs> now, you know, um, you know, you know maggots? Maggots, when they grow, uh, it goes through a certain phase, right? From a worm to... Do you know how, how the flies are made? From the egg to the maggot. To the... This is not maggot, okay? This is called pupae. Okay, from pupae to fly, okay? So this, this doesn't look like a worm, does it? This becomes very hardened you know, very hardened. So somebody discovered, only human would do that. When the, when the maggots would become a, a pupae, it has to find a, a location to cocoon himself, right? Well, in order to make a cocoon, it, climb, it has to climb certain angle. So this is the angle they found out. So all you have to do is a bunch of maggots, put a stick in a certain degree, they will all climb. They will all... Dun, 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 dun. You know, so how, you know how, do you, how do you harvest the maggots? It's not dirty, you know, holding your hands with the... That would be gross, right? All you have to do is put a stick. At the end of the stick, you put a bucket. Nice and clean. They will just... So at the end of the day, you get a bucket full of free maggots or pupae. And guess what? Chickens, they just go crazy. Not only chicken, guess who? Fish. If you put pupae to fish, they just jump out of the water. So that's what they do. Look at it. So very simple, very simple. That It looks like a little... Doesn't it look like, now nah, he's, he's going to be our Tony. <laughs> anyway, so organic RBGs. Okay, very simple. You put all the food in there. Within three days, you have a bunch of And then guess what? This black stuff at the end, guess where you would put it? In the garden. And then, you know, that's a fertilizer, automatic fertilizer. Uh, and then non-organic, uh, like plastics and wraps and papers, we're going to burn it. Burn it. So Tony's going to make a drum. You know, the 100-gallon drum? And put a hole on the bottom and open the top. And, they, and then just put the stuff and they just, you know, burn it. I don't know if you ever seen my picture a long time ago when we went to Myanmar, that I burned the garbages. Standing there, and I burned the garbage. I didn't have the drum, so all we have to have is a drum. 
in the middle, we put a grade, and then you, you know, to, to incinerate. Very simple, very simple. That's how we're going to solve the. Now, excrements are different. <laughs> Human excrements. Uh, we have two tanks, uh, two large tanks that uh, filters our, our excrements. So it goes onto one side, and then it, it'll uh, ferment. And it'll ferment there for about six months, and eventually it liquefies everything. So you, you know, the stuff that you didn't chew, you know, it just goes in there and it all liquefies. And then when it fills, it goes to the second tank. By the time the second tank is filled, it takes usually about a year to two years. And guess where it goes after the second tank? To the ground. And guess where our water comes from? <laughs> from the ground. Now, the water source that we have is 800 feet deep. 800 feet deep. That's a lot of, I mean, that's, and then they dug it by hand. I don't know if you've seen it, they, you know, they rotate it. Like, anyways, uh, so uh, there is really a no chance of uh, uh, water contamination. We already did a, a water test. And only thing that, the reason why I don't want to drink that is because it has too much calcium. So I've seen you know, too much uh, calcium carbonate, so it's not really good for human consumption. It's only for, good for a shower. We're going to put a, a fairly good uh, filter system, so it, it, it'll work fine for, for our shower. But for water, we're going to drink the bottled water. Okay. okay. So, you know, I've been, I've been thinking about this for many, many years now, and I've been looking, you know, remember I, I grew fish there? So now I know how to grow uh, tilapia. So eventually, sometime next year, we're going to uh, dig a hole on the ground and make a um, pond about, maybe about this big, about this big, from here, about half the stage. And inside, guess what we're going to grow? Our dinner, <laughs> tilapia, the fish taco. <laughs> so one day when you get there, you will eat fish taco from our own backyard. Guess, guess what those fish eat? <laughs> okay. I mean, okay. anyways, uh, questions? No? No more? Yes. Yes, uh, okay, the child, the orphan, the real orphan. So I've been, I've been praying about it, and I've been, I've been uh, pondering really uh, deeply because we have two, two ways now. One option is that we only uh, choose one child, and, you know, Kwak Jisanim will scour, scour the land of Myanmar and find an orphan. Um, I don't think it is impossible for us knowing Kwak Sanim now. Uh, he's going <laughs> to go to the end of the earth, <laughs> find me an orphan, a uh, four-year-old orphan. Uh, that's, I don't think that's an impossibility. But I ran the scenario over and over, having one child in that huge house. Um, it's okay, it's okay. There's going to be a, a, some problem and some some educational problem also. Uh, so that's one option. And then each year we gradually pick two more and three more and four more, you know. Uh, you know that, right? I don't need to explain that. Or that's one option. The other option is um, we have, we will run our uh, orphanage. Not the real orphan, American standard orphan, but Myanmar standard orphan, you know, the poor people. So maybe if we open up that house for, for Myanmar National, we, I don't think we'll have any problem collecting you know, uh, children who need help. And then we pick one of our own and grow with them, you know, raise the child with them. Uh, that also, I ran, ran the many scenarios, and that will also have a lot of headaches and a lot of problems. But I, I, I'm, I'm, so we are, we are kind of, Okay, what are we going to do? So eventually, in, in my opinion, I think once we begin, I think God will point the finger and, and let us do either way. Okay, so if we do the... 
we do like 30 kids uh, from age maybe four to you know 18. We all know those orphans, those children, those people, those poor children, they will all go out, you know, after the high school is gone. So they will just keep going out. But our own will gradually grow, you know, silently. So eventually, maybe 10 years, our own orphans will replace them completely because our population will grow, you know, in such a way. So that's why my option. But I, we, I haven't decided yet. If you have any other idea, I am, I'm always open. Always open. But, I mean, I'm just excited that we are finally doing something. It's doing something. Okay. And when we, you know, you all know when we go to January, we're, we're going to drop one of us there permanently. <laughs> That'll be Julian. <laughs> Uh, Julian's going to live there. So we've been looking into the visa situation. How long can she stay? Uh, she can stay probably about two months, maybe. Um, so she'll have to come out and then go in, come out and go in to renew the visa. So we're trying to look into the way that we can stay longer, maybe six months or so. You know. So anyways, that's 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 the... Uh, that's what we are doing. Okay. Any other questions? Huh? Okay. Then I want to uh, talk. Yes. Well. What is the name of the orphanage? Oh, you don't know the name of the orphanage? What is it? Yeah, Rainbow Land. Okay, because this whole project uh, began by uh, donation uh, by Rainbow. Then you know, I, I was, you know, every time, ever since our church had begun, uh, I I was wanting to begin, you know, the orphanage ministry somewhere. Remember, a few years ago, we were trying to do the Philippine. So we're going to, you know, Hala Hala, we went, ha, is it Hala Hala? There, there's a location. Yes, yes. It's just a Hala Hala, right? Yeah? So we went there, and, and unfortunately, to do this kind of ministry, we, you need two vital things. You know what two of those vital things are? One is? One is money. <laughs> you can't do anything without money. I mean, you know, money is, this... This project so far cost us $250,000 by until today. So we, we, st we still need to do um, the ground and the wall, you know, the, the wall. So I mean, anyways, it, it takes it's a quite a bit of money. So that's one. What's the other? Huh? Uh, a person, a people, people, a person that we can trust. So we, I've been praying, you know, if you, you have one and you don't have the other, it's no good. If you have a person, you know, who's willing to do and go, but ain't got no dinero, man, you got nothing. <laughs> so you, but if you have a money and there's no, nobody to trust, you can't do it neither. So I've been praying and praying and praying, and, and one day both of them happened in the same month. The, you know, the, when the Kwak Sanim said, I, I will go. Okay, I mean, he, he's probably a very rarely uh, seen faithful person. So he's, he's willing. Uh, and then the, the fund came in, so we start doing all this. But, you know, obviously you have helped so much too because we only had about $100,000 to begin with, but we had to purchase the land and, you know, start taking it. And then from then on we start building and building and building. So, I mean, I think we are almost done. We're almost done. But once we build it, we still need to run it, you know. So that's why we call it Rainbow Land. Mm. Mm. Nothing. Almost nothing. I mean, there is no financial connection. Julian's uh, question was, what is the relationship between Pastor Pumpi's church and Rainbow Land? Virtually nothing. Uh, virtually. However, a lot of 
connections as a friendly connection, but not, you know, not beyond it. Other than, other than the both facilities are owned by NGO. Do you know what NGO is? NGO is a non-governmental organization, or it is, it is a non-profit organization, just like this church. So we have IGN Myanmar NGO, which was established about six years ago. I don't know if some of you went with me to meet the, the lawyer on top of the Sakura. Anyways, um, so he made, you know, he, he, uh, he made the uh, uh, NGO. So that NGO is the purchaser, the owner. The NGO is owned by 50% from uh, American IGM and 50% by uh, uh, Myanmar IGM. So Pastor Bumpi is the uh, a representative of uh, Myanmar IGM, and I am the uh, pres um, I am the representative of USA IGM. So both of them owns 50% exactly. So neither party can sell it. And once you buy a buy a building in the name of NGO, you cannot sell it for private use because you, we didn't pay any tax. So once you sell it, that money has to buy another property in the name of that NGO. So eventually my plan is, you know, uh, some, sometime the uh, F M Myanmar people will own everything. But it, it'll be in a non-profit organization, not privately owned, per, you know, uh, endeavor. Okay? Does that ans answer your question? Okay, anyways. Okay, that, so we don't, have, we don't have much connection. I mean, church, does, but if church wants to do eventually encounters, and my plan is to do trustees one of these days on the next building, next phase building. If that's finished, then we can do trustees maybe 50 to 60 candidates and, and 50 to 60 team members. So we can do trustees in there. Then I guess the, the Myanmar IGM can come and you know, visit us. And eventually, if we buy the land next to, adjacent to it, those of you who've been there, there is about four acre land adjacent to it. And I want to build a hospital and, 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 and school from, from K1 to K12. And eventually, if we expand a little more, uh, maybe after I'm gone, can make, make a, a university. So make a big, like a complex. Okay. That's our plan. You're part of it. So let's do this. The woman said to the serpent, we may, eat from, eat, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say, this is Eve answering to Satan. Okay? Uh, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. What is the name of this tree? tree of knowledge of good and evil. And you must not touch it or you will die. The question, when I read Genesis 2 and read this verse, the words are switched. God says, do not eat from the tree or you will die. But Eve says, do not even touch. But that's not what God said. Is there a reason for that? Is God showing that Eve is already deceived? Maybe. Maybe. Why did Eve say that? Hmm? Why, would, why would Eve say that? You, why, why would Eve add on top of whatever God said? No, no takers? Okay, November birthdays. You're supposed to answer. Try. Why would Eve say it? Very simple. It's not a trick question. Very simple. Because Eve is typical. Huh? See, you are all sick. <laughs> Eve is a typical human. 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 <laughs> Woman. <laughs> you should see in your faces. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Well, Eve is a typical human. Why? She wanted to be? She wanted to be? Not humble. How about that? She wanted to add something so that she can be? She can be powerful. Okay? She wanted to add her five cents, basically. You know? In other words, she was deceived, I guess. Okay? I will make your pain in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Now, who's saying this? God is saying to whom? Eve, okay, not human, okay? <laughs> to Eve, okay? So because of what Eve and Adam did, is childbirth, painful, painful part of it. Hmm. That's a, that's a, um, at the first glance, it's kind of uh, silly, but in the second glance, it does make sense. So because of what Eve and Adam did, I wonder why this person say Eve and Adam. Because this is a female asking this question. Didn't say Adam and Eve, no. Eve and Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so because of what Eve and Adam did, I was going, what? <laughs> Something is... <laughs> is childbirth, the painful part of it, a curse from God? What do you think? Is it a curse? Childbearing a curse? Uh, yes and no. Yes, that's why. Yes and no. Yes, yes and no. Because uh, the pain part might be curse. Now, I don't know why this person said Eve and Adam. It's just a mistake? If it's just a simple mistake, then that's fine. Because I was going to say, well, I mean, in a strictest sense, it is what Adam and Eve did. But in this part, God is speaking to Eve regarding what? She did, right? Not Adam did together, but she did. So because of you did that, you will have the pain during the childbirth, okay? Does this mean God did not initially mean for it to be painful for women? What do you think? In other words, it to be the, the, the labor part, right? So did God make it uh, non-painful? And then it became painful. Well, it, you know, you can argue both ways because I, I heard, uh, really, I heard a very good argument uh, in both ways. Did you know humans are the only animals complaining pain during the childbirth? Have you ever seen a dog saying, I <laughs> And then they have a child. <laughs> have you ever seen have you ever seen horse deliver a baby? Do you know horse you know horses are born with their legs stretched out? Now, humans are born this way. Right? Horse is born this way. <laughs> have you ever seen horse complain about? Pain during childbirth? No. no, I've seen elephant. Have you ever seen giraffe delivering a baby? They have to fall six feet. <laughs> they st deliver uh, standing up, giraffe. They drop. I don't know if you ever seen it. You know, I, I always watch these documentaries. And I'm going, oh my goodness. Have you, can you imagine a doctor dropping your baby? They are very slippery. I don't know if you, if you realize it, because amniotic fluid is really slippery. I mean, I, you know, so we learn how to hold, their, how, hold the baby. But if you don't know how to hold it, you know, you just <laughs> imagine. Can you imagine, you know, the daddy is looking and the doctor <laughs> dropping on the floor? <laughs> Man, you are done. <laughs> I mean, they'll shoot you with a shotgun. But guess what? Giraffe drops six feet. Now, does giraffe complain? No. So this, this is, so this is a kind of valid, valid argument, really, you know, in childbirth, because God is giving human. I don't know, because I'm not a 
you know, animal, I, I'm not a cow, or I have never seen, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've seen delivery, but I, I've been, I don't know how their pain, you know, percep perception is on animals, so I am. But I guess that's why, because God is saying to Eve that you will have pain. So, um, I mean, I want to ask, you know, those of, you, those of the moms who had baby, is, was it really painful? Yeah, but you know humans are very clever. Now they ain't got no pain. You know, they ain't got a shot on their back and go, I don't feel anything. <laughs> and God is saying, come on. <laughs> if God already knows that we are born as innate sinners and have evil in our hearts, why would he curse the ground? Now, did God curse ground? So God says to Eve, you know, I'm going to give you pain during the childbirth. What did God do to Adam? Huh? Work very hard. And then, okay, you, you will work with brow of your, you know, sweat on your brow for your work, for your eat. You know, that's why, you know, we have to work. And then, and then God did something very extra that he cursed the he cursed the ground. Now, if you are the ground, remember we had a discussion about that, the fig tree? You remember the, the fig tree association? <laughs> you know, that's unfair, you know? Well, what did ground do? Huh? So, if you are the ground, you know, ground association, <laughs> what would ground say? Huh? What did we do? Well, Guess what? The curse the ground is a ground here mean, does not mean this ground. I mean, it could mean this ground, you know, but ground is not only the, the earth, the, the dirt part of the, or the, the ground, okay? It, it could mean also when it says ground, okay, it means the whole world, physical world, which means it is now going to be the Realm of Satan. Realm of Satan. That's what he... So, you know, I, I'm not going to use this anymore. In other words, this God is saying this whole thing is now corrupt. Okay? So we live in it. Okay? That's it. Does that answer your questions? Hmm. Okay. So can we go to Genesis now? Uh, yes. Paul? So I, I, can you give him the microphone, please? Don't throw it. Don't throw it. You know how you said Eve is human, so that's how she reacted. Um, you know when you said that. Um, okay, he wanted. She wanted to be, yeah, non-humble. Yeah. She so, wanted to add her five cents. So even though at the time God only gave one rule to Adam and Eve, were they always bound to sin in some other way as well, even before eating the fruit? So, okay, <laughs> say the question one more time. So you know how... I, I don't understand that the uh, question. So were, um, were Adam and Eve... Were Adam and Eve... Bound to sin and... Um, bound to sin... What is that bound to sin mean? So they, it was a matter of time before they set, uh, sin. Matter of time before they sin. In other words, were they able to, were they born or were they made able to sin? Able to sin as well as um, were they, like, it was inevitable. For them to sin. Well, inevitable means they were able to sin, right? Yes. They were able to sin, yes. They were not born as a sinner. Okay, you, you have to remember that. When Adam was made and Eve was made, they were not born as a sinner. On the other hand, you and I are born as a 
sinner, okay? There's a, there's a very clear distinction that you want to make. Because when God made Adam and Eve, God saw the people and he said it was good, very good, right? In other words, human beings that God made was very good. Very good means clean, right? But when they, when they sin, they become unclean. So they have child, we become unclean. So we were born as an unclean people, right? But they were not made unclean to begin with. However, when they were made, even though they were clean, they did have capacity to sin. Why? Because they had to be given free will. Free will is very strange. Free will is your utter, a utter ability to choose good and evil, right? Or to, I mean, choose to whatever, A or B, right? So sin or not sin. So they had to have that capacity, okay? That's called free will. Okay, they were given free will to choose. They were not made as a sinner at the beginning, but gradually using that free will and became unclean or became sin sinful. Okay? And we were descendant of them. Okay? You need to make this sure. So, so it's called, in, in a theological term, it's called peccability. Pecca means sin. Okay, so, you know, when, when you see a, a, a new car, a used car, it says impeccable, right? What, what does impeccable mean? No blemish, right? It's, it's, it's just, you know, no, no dings, right? That's what they're trying. So, so impeccable means it's, so in a theological term, impeccable means you are not capable of sinning. So was Adam and Eve impeccable? No, they were peccable. They were peccable. Now, who are, who are we? We are not peccable. Do you know who, who, how we describe us? So we cannot but sin. Huh? <laughs> so it's impossible to impeccable okay so we we are impossible to impact impeccable so we are born as a sinner now can we ever become impeccable yes Gia. after we die yes after we die under one condition when you go to heaven okay if you go to hell <laughs> no good. But if you go to heaven, once we go to heaven, we become? Imagine if we go to heaven and we become peccable. <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah, that's, that's right. Oh, no. Because once we get there. So have you ever wondered, you know, how oh, I want to live in this, this beautiful world, you know. How I wish that there is no evil in this world. I wish there is no disease. I wish there is no disasters and all that. We, we call that utopia, right? Well, guess what? If you are a believer of Jesus Christ, one of these days you will be in utopia. We call heaven. You know, there is, it's, now it is impossible to sin. Because if it is possible, then, you know, the reason is because we have used our free will to choose Jesus. Once we used our free will to choose Jesus, and then we become, you know, we, we died and resurrected a second time and living in the heaven, we are no longer, there is no darkness, there is no Satan, there is no temptation at all. We are in the fullness of light. So if you read the Revelation, in, in heaven, there's few things they, they don't have. Okay? You know, there is no shadow. That's a very strange concept. There is no shadow. Because shadow means there is a source of light somewhere. Right? And it, it passes and there's a darkness. Well, in heaven, there's no darkness anywhere. So there's no shadow. That's why in Revelation it says no, there's no shadow. Okay? There's no prayer. Wouldn't that be strange if we start praying in heaven? Lord, and Jesus standing there, hello? 
I'm here, Baba. You know, I mean, there's no hope. In heaven, there's no hope. You can, I wish, you know, hope means you are in a bad place right now, wishing to be better, right? There ain't no bad place in heaven. You know, there are, there's no Bible. Imagine you're a Bible study in the heaven, and Jesus said, what are you studying? <laughs> well, anyways, I, don't, I wish, I hope that, okay, let's go on. Let, let's do it next week. Chapter 42, <laughs> to be continued. Okay, when Joseph learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you just keep looking at each other? Now, what do you feel here when you read this? You don't feel nothing? Huh? You don't feel anything? When, when Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, how many sons? Eleven, Eleven sons. Why do you just keep looking at each other? Now imagine if I say to, to Jonathan, you know, we are hungry. So what do you keep in each other? How do you feel? <coughs> huh? I will hear something from my wife, for sure. <laughs> do you feel some... You don't feel anything? You, you, you speak like this at home? Huh? Does your dad talk to you like this? When would, your, when would your mom or dad talk to you like this? Huh? Okay. He continued, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and not die. Then ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Je Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with the others because he was afraid that harm might come to him. We all fully understand, right? Why? Because he's precious. Precious. Who's precious? Benjamin, right? Why? Because Joseph is gone. Joseph is dead, right? So now it's only Benjamin, okay? But Jacob did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with the others because he was afraid that harm might come to him. So Israel's sons were among those who went to buy grain. I imagine there are a bunch of people. For there was famine in the land of Canaan also. So there's a whole global famine, okay? Now Joseph was the governor of the land. Now I have a question. How old is Joseph here? Okay, so good, very good. Minimum 37, at least 37. Why? Okay. Huh? Okay, when was the day? Oh, how old was Joseph when he was picked up by, by Pharaoh? 30, right? And he said, seven years famine? I mean, seven years uh, plenty? Seven years famine, right? So now it is a? Famine. So how many years has passed? Minimum seven years. I don't think they would go down there on the first day of the famine. Let's go there, man. It's been seven years. I mean, it's got to be at least a year, wouldn't you, th wouldn't you say? So maybe 37, um, closing to 38. Minimum 38. Or, you know, uh, I mean, pushed hard 37. Question. How many years has it been they saw Joseph? 20 years, 20 years. Because Joseph was sold when he was 17, right? Now, now if there are any of you who's going, hey, go read some Bible. <laughs> huh? Okay, so he's, he's almost 40 now. He's, he's 40 years old. Now, do we have any 17-year-old here? 17 became 40. Okay, so to the brothers, to the brothers, 17-year-old was the last time they saw Joseph. Now he's, he's 20 years later, okay? Uh, they will never realize, you know, who, who Joseph was. Um, they would never recognize Joseph if they see him. And not only that, he's fully dressed with, with the pharaohs, you know, and with the thick, 
eyeliners <laughs> with their hair, with a you know, snake coming out. And I imagine all these 10 brothers could look like a, um, I don't know, homeless, you know? And, they're all, and they couldn't even look up, you know? So that's, that's the scene. Now Joseph was the governor of the land, the person who sold grain to all its people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, when they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground, as soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, I imagine. But he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from? He asked. From the land of Canaan, they replied through the translation, to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Then he remembered his dreams about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to see where our land is unprotected. No, my lord, they answered. Your servants have come to buy, buy food. We are all the sons of one man. Your servants are honest men, not spies. Now, the million dollar question. Why, what is Joseph doing? Huh? I, I, yes. Why is Joseph accusing them? The testing brothers. What are you testing? Oh, uh, they changed? They changed from uh, people to brothers because of So by doing this, he can test them? How would you test their selling? They would confess? What do you think? It's very difficult, isn't it? Huh? There is a hint. There is a hint in this phrase. Okay, Ben. Get information. Get information. Now remember, uh, remember Joseph is the. Who is Joseph here? Huh? He's the prime minister of the biggest, richest, powerfulest nation on earth. If he wants to find the what? Information? He don't need nobody. Guess what? There are two million spies that he can move. Remember? Pharaoh said nobody would even move finger without your command in this whole land, right? So everybody, so imagine if he wanted to see his father. Now at this point, my question is, does Joseph know how they are doing? Yes, yes. They, he, he probably knows everything. Why? He's a prime minister of? He don't need nobody. So that's a hint. Why then? Why is he treating them? To get a private, huh? get a private audience. Now remember, Joseph, who is he? Prime minister of the? So if he wanted to have a prime, private audience? <laughs> well, can he, reveal, can he have a, pri a private audience with a? So why? There's a hint. It's right in front of you. Huh? So he, there is a hint. Hint is, he remembered. What did he remember? He dreamed. What about his dream? Huh? He's falling down. So what he... See, it's, 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 okay, get it clear. If he won, it's been, if he was just missing them, or if he was just filled with the rage and hatred, paying back, okay, then he would never say, remembered his dream. There's a hint, right? So it's not a hatred, anger, you know, I've been waiting for you to pay back, or I'm so happy to see you, you know, none of that. It has something to do with his dream. Okay, that's a, okay, James, and then... Steve. Because dreams are from God. How he wanted them to kneel. 
Well, do you remember who he is? <laughs> Their nose is on the ground already. Can you imagine Joseph doing this? And then all 10 of them, when they come, guess what? They're licking the ground. <laughs> Can you imagine? So he did not need that. That is a dream, Stephen. I'm emotionally stirred. He is emotionally stirred. Yes, there is no doubt about it. He goes into the private room and cries, come out. He's emotionally stirred. If he's emotionally stirred alone, guess what he would do? I mean, Stephen, if you didn't see me for 20 years and one day when you're like a big businessman making $2 million a month and you saw this old man walking, hey, Stephen, I'm the one that married you. <laughs> now what would you do to me? You say, you're a spies. Would you do that? Oh, very strange. See, this scene is this is it's really rather complicated and very requires a, a real a really a thought, you know, deep thought. Because he said he remembered. What did he remember? Well, because this proves that when he had his initial dream, the bowing down part, right? He knew exactly what that dream meant. One day he was the one that's going to save the family, right? However, that's not he remembered. That's the hint. See, when, when, it's, when we say it's dream, we all are sucked into the contents of the dream. It's not contents of the dream that he remembered because he doesn't need to remember. He's been remembering it for 20 years. Remember? But when, they, when he saw them con connected to his dream, because, because I mean, I'm, I'll tell you, because, see, he's been waiting for this day not to revenge Okay? Because when, he's, when he told his brother, oh, you, you are bowing down, what did they say? Are you surely going to reign over us? You know, it means... It means huh? So they, they feel all offended. But that was, not the, that was not the intention of Joseph telling the contents of the dream. You know? It is because one day you will have a hardship and I will save you. That was his good intention, but they reacted in a bad way, right? That's what he remembered. I'm going to somehow let you know that what had done 20 years ago that bought me this all, you know, hellish 20 years of agony, that you are, you are mistaken. But I want, I, Somehow I need to tell. Well, imagine if he tells you, uh-huh, I told you 20 years ago, you know, this is why. Guess what they would feel? Imagine if you are the brothers and I'm the Pharaoh. See, didn't I tell you 20 years ago I will save you? Now I'm the vice Pharaoh. I'm going to save you. How would you feel? Well, first of all, you will continuously, yes, my Lord, yes, my Lord. You do that, right? Why? Because your stomach is going, so you see. But while you're doing that, <laughs> you know, you do that, right? Same thing would happen. He couldn't do that here. He couldn't do So how can, you, how can you somehow let them realize, oh my goodness, God already had provided all this, but we were mistaken. Okay, that's what he's trying to say. Let's continue. Okay? No, my Lord, they answered, your servants have come to buy food. We are all the son of one man. Your servants are honest men, not spies. Now, when verse 11 is spoken... If I were God, you know what would happen? Huh? He said, we are all the son of one man. Your servants are honest men, not spies. When they say, Ani, I will have my personal lightning <laughs> come down and personally split their tongues in 20 degrees, I mean 20 or whatever. Why? Because they are not? Honest man, you know, imagine for 20, this has been 20 years, right? For 20 years at the beginning of chapter 42, 
You can feel Jacob's heart. How did you feel Jacob's heart? It's been broken. It's been utterly broken, utterly ashed. Can you feel it? Utterly ashed. You know, they saw him doing that for 20 years. All 10 of them had a key to undo that. He just requires a one word. You know what that one word was? Dad, he's not dead. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Jacob, you know, for 20 years in front of them, okay, all 10 of them, in front of them, he, every day he's, he's, he's going, and they were just watching, knowing, you know, knowing, knowing the key to this, this agony of his father. They didn't do it. And then they said, we are honest men. Now the problem is, the even bigger problem is, they really believe it. They're really believing it. I mean, you can feel their, their frustration, you know. We are honest. That's a problem. That's a problem. See, they are not. They are ain't. But they think they are. Can you feel that? Huh? They are not. We, we know they are not. I mean, for 20 years, I mean, Jacob is utterly ashed. He's just broken. But 20 years, they, I mean, that's incredible. But they say, we are not, you know, we are honest people. We are honest except just one thing. We are honest. That's, that's crazy. No, he said to them, you have come to see where our land is unprotected. But they replied, your servants were 12 brothers, the sons of one man. See, we are honest. Who lives in the land of Canaan? We are honest. The youngest is now with our father, and one is no more. Now, what it means, no more, we don't know what no more means, but they are telling the truth. Joseph said to them, it is just as I told you, you are spies, and this is how you will be tested. As surely as Pharaoh lives, you will not leave this place unless your youngest brothers come here. Send one, of your bro one number to get your brother. The rest of you will be kept in the prison so that your words may be tested to see if you are telling the truth. If you are not, then as surely as Pharaoh lives, you are spies. See, there is jo Joseph doesn't need to know any of these. He's, he's giving them the test, you know, uh, with a purpose. And he put them all in custody of three days. And one third day, Joseph said to them, do this and you will live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers stay here in prison while the rest of you go and take grain back for your starving household. But you must bring your youngest brother to me so that your words may be verified and that you may not, may not die. This they proceed to do. Now, Joseph did not need to see Benjamin this way, you know. What, if, what, would, what should he do if he really wanted to see Benjamin to be brought to Egypt? Very simple. <laughs> bring him here. Okay. Very soon. He doesn't need to go through all this, this rigor mores, okay? 21. They say to one another, surely we are being punished because of our brother. We saw how distressed we, you know, you know when people get beat down, they kind of see a little bit of themselves. Huh? They said to one another, surely we are being punished because of our brother. We saw how distressed he was when he pleaded with us for his life but we would not listen. That's why this stress has come on us. Now the problem is, they see one thing, they don't see the other. Now, which one is more evil, to kill Joseph or sell it off to Egypt or seeing your father for 20 years dying every day while you are fully knowing the answer, one word? Which one is more evil? I know both are evil. I mean, but they think this is more evil, you know? Reuben replied, didn't I tell you not to sin against the boy, but you wouldn't listen? Now we must give an accounting for his, brother, his blood. They did not realize that Joseph could understand them since he was using an interpreter. So Joseph is listening, you know? It's like me, and I left Korea, you know, when I was 18, so if, if I stand... And people speaking Korean, thinking that I'm an American. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
he turned away from them and began to weep. Now, you know why he was weeping, emotionally stirred, but also the evilness of his brothers. I think that would be really sad. But then came back and, sp and spoke to them again. He had Simon taken from them and bound before their eyes. Now, $10 million question. Why Simon? I don't know. I don't know. There's no way to know. But I, I want to know who pointed Simon. You stay. Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain, to put each man's silver back in his sack. Okay, that's, that's a trick. And give them provisions for their journey. After this was done for them, they loaded their grain on their donkeys and left. At the place where they stopped for the night, one of them opened his sack to get feed for his donkey, and he saw his silver in the mouth of his sack. Now, how, did you, how would you feel when you see that? Damn, they gave us the whole money back. Would you happy? Huh? You know, if Simon was not there, you might be happy. <laughs> you know, like it's like you give you know twenty dollar bill and they give you you know hundred dollars worth of you know change. It's like, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Only problem, you know, Simon is uh, is there or Simeon is there. My silver has been returned, he said to his brothers. Here it is in my sack. Their hearts sank, and they turned to each other, trembling, and said, what is this that God has done to us? And every time bad things happen, you know, God gets blamed. Then they came to their father, Jacob, in the land of Canaan. They told him all that had happened to them. They said, the man who is Lord over the land spoke harshly to us. And treated us as though we were spying on the land. We don't know why. But we said to him, we are honest men. We are not spies. We were 12 brothers, sons of one father. One is no more. And the youngest is now with our father in Canaan. Wouldn't that be nice when they come back and said, Father, we have sinned. We came back and we realized how, how bad we were. And Joseph it didn't die. I'm sorry. Then the man who is Lord over the land said to us, This is how I will know whether you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me and take food for your starving household and go. But bring your bro youngest brother to me so I will know that you are not spies but honest men. Then I will give your brother back to you and you can trade in the land. As they were emptying their sacks, there in each man's sack was his pouch of silver. When they and their father saw the money pouches, they were frightened. Who would be the most frightened? Jacob. Jacob's heart is broken again, whatever is left. Their father Jacob said to them, You have deprived me of my children. Can you imagine <laughs> Jacob saying all this? Joseph is no more and Simeon is no more and now you want to take Benjamin. Everything is against me. I don't know how, how desperately uh, punished have you ever been, but this Jacob is really sad. Then Reuben said to his father, you may put both of my sons to death if I do not bring him back to you. Entrust him to my care and I will bring him back. But Jacob said, my son will not go down there with you. His brother is dead and he is the only one left. If harm comes to him on the journey you are taking, you will bring my gray head down to the grave in sorrow. Now Jacob is really, he's really sad. I mean, he's, he, this is like lowest of the low. Can you imagine how, if, how would you feel if you're Jacob? I want to focus not only Jacob, I want to focus on one person here. His name is Reuben. Reuben. Remember Reuben? From the previous stories? He was the one trying to block. Okay? Who's the Reuben? First son, first son. What else? Huh? He slept his, his father's uh, concubine. What else? Isn't it strange, you know? Eventually, we'll see one more time, Reuben. 
Reuben always say the right things. He looks like a good guy, isn't he? Huh? He's really, really, I mean, he's the one. He said, you can't do that. You're going to save him. Save him, you know? So somebody asked in, in KM's, you know, you know, so what do you think about Reuben? Yeah. Well, The problem of these 10 brothers is they are not honest people. Are they good or bad people? In your opinion, bad people. In their opinion. <laughs> There's a significant discrepancies, right? So, so the problem is they, they are not good people, OK? They are not good people. But the problem, the bigger problem than them being not good, the even bigger problem is they think they are they're good. Okay, they think they are good. Well, Reuben is one of them, okay? but also Reuben is the kind of person who says the right thing all the time. Have you ever met a person who's you know, in the group meeting and he writes answer, but you don't like him? I mean, have you ever seen anybody liking Reuben? I mean, he looks like he's, he's a savior, you know. You know imagine, you know, take my two sons and you can kill them if I don't bring him back. Now, if I were Jacob, heard that, I think I will kill Reuben. Why? Because I lost everybody and now he's saying, you can kill your own grandson. That's what he's saying. You get it? Reuben's two sons are Jacob's. Grandchildren, right? So he's saying, well, if I don't bring back, you can kill me. So now I lose Benjamin and Joseph and now two grandchildren. See, see Reuben is, is the kind of person that people don't like. But they, he says all the right things. Not many people follow. You know, but there is right things. He, because, because we know, we, none of us, I don't know if you, you want to name your child Reuben. <laughs> You know, he says he has a very significant flaw, one flaw. You know what that is? Huh? So much this, not much action. See, when the, when the time comes, there's no action. There's no action. Simple. There's no, he knows everything. The problem is, is the biggest, the, the, the grand problem of Reuben is that because he knows, he thinks he is good. That's the biggest flaw of him. That's the saddest. That's why Reuben is just utterly broken. He's, he's, he's you know, he always, you know, he said, oh, I, I think, you know, he, he never says, you know, this is me. I'm going to do it. He doesn't do it. You know, so always thinking. Have you ever, you know, you know, if you think for a thousand years, what's going to be done? Nothing, nothing. You know, imagine if we are thinking about building orphanage. I mean, orphanage, orphanage. I'm going to build orphanage, orphanage. I'm going to build orphanage. Every, I mean, every nation, every nation, orphanage. It's been sixty years. Orphanage, orphanage. I'm going to orphanage. Wouldn't that be nice? Have an orphanage. What do you call that? <laughs> I mean, you know, if you don't lay a one single brick, haven't done anything. The biggest flaw of Christianity is faith. You know, only faith. Only faith is required. No, it's not. Or maybe you can put it, what, kind, what, is, what is the faith that you're referring? You know, if you think faith that's in here, that's nothing. That's dead. You know what James is saying? The kind of faith that we are talking about is the faith that produces the action. Okay, without that action, that faith is dead. Right? That's what Reuben's problem. You know, people think Reuben thinks that you know he's good because he all knows his answer. He knows his answer fully. From the beginning to the end, he knows. I mean, he can probably memorize Bible verses, you know. I know. I've been there, done that. But you do nothing. That's why people don't follow. I mean, you know, people be a Christian for 30, 40, 50 years. They pray, they sing, they do all that. 
Only problem, it's no action. It's really no action. That's the worst part of it. That's the saddest part of it. And Ruben utterly gets destroyed. Really. I mean, you know, because you are here on Thursday night, I want, I want to tell you something. You know, for example, for example, you know, you want to be, you want to be a, a good Christian, right? I mean, you know, you know, without tithing, it's really difficult to be a good Christian. I'm not saying tithing is required. It's not required, okay? But see, if you're just thinking about it, I mean, you know, where would your heart go? Your heart goes where your treasure is, or your treasure goes where your heart is? Where? <laughs> Think very carefully. Your heart goes where your treasure is, or your treasure goes where your heart is? People usually think treasure will go where the heart is. It ain't. It ain't done. You know, okay? Your heart goes where your treasure is. Action. No action, nothing done. Nothing done. I mean, you know, all these things. If you just, oh, yes, no, no. It has to have action. Amen? I really want all of us to be a good Christian. That's the, that's the story of our Reuben, okay? Let's give God the glory. Thank you. Okay, come to each other and say, action! action. Mm -hmm.